Jess Fowl from D.C. checking in. He writes, badass, OP, bullying someone smaller. You know, that's just honesty. That is, that is just honesty and human nature. People will size up the person that they're pissed off with, and if they know they can take them, then they're a little tougher. That, that's the reality of it. It's not bullying if they're bigger than you. I was just going to say that, yeah. It's amazing and heroic. And dumb. And stupid, incredibly stupid. Most people get uh, a lot tougher when they think they could take the person. That, that's yeah. just, that's just uh, human nature. I mean, when, when you have, like, road rage and you see some kind of soccer mom in a minivan, you're pretty damn tough on the highway, yeah. aren't you? You're uh -huh. cutting her off, you're jamming on your brakes, you're beeping your horn, you're giving right. her the finger. But it's if it's uh, you know a bunch of black dudes from Compton that have you know rap music cranking, are you doing the same thing? Ex are you doing the yes, same thing? Yes, I am. Yeah, right. Under my breath, not looking. Besides, if they're from Compton, they probably wouldn't be driving here. Well, yeah, but I'm trying. It's a national show, so I'm trying oh, to like cool. all of a sudden. Wow, hey, they're broadcasting from L.A. somewhere. <laughs> <Compton>. <laughs> See, I'm smart, <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's that, that's how it is. Yes, it is. You want me to act like, oh, no, you know, I, I take on all comers, man. The, the bigger, the better. Yeah, if you're 6'4", 300, I'm not scared of you. No, the reality is you, you, you take on people you know you can take. It's just how much smaller than, uh, than you they are that makes you uh, a pussy. If it's pretty evenly matched, then, you're, you know, you're not a pussy or anything or a bully. Uh, if he's slightly weaker, that's a great advantage for you, and you'll probably uh, do some damage. But if they're really pathetically geeky, weak, and, you know, a lot smaller than you, then, I don't know. And then in a wheelchair. You, <laughs> you know, a great example. It's a story that... And maybe you should walk away from the situation. Great example comes up on the show from time to time. The, you know, the time I hit that dude when we were driving home from yeah. work. Okay? Mm -hmm. Anthony and I used to have road rage like, like no one's business, especially yep. Anthony. I mean, he was ridiculous. I've seen you. Uh -huh. You know, you, you you do get tougher depending on who's pissing you off. I'm so much more relaxed now. And uh, and so when I hit the, the guy in the crosswalk with my car, he turned out to be a, a big, tough mother effer. Yeah, he was a tough guy. And when he took out my, you know, side view mirror with one punch. Emasculated you right then and there. And it wasn't, uh, yeah, it wasn't a small side view. We've talked about it. It's one of those very involved ones with the, you know, the, uh, the cords and stuff. Yeah. As soon as he knocked that off my car with one punch, I'm like, hey. Sorry, neighbor. Okay, let me just... You have a good day. Let me get out of your way. <laughs> but if it, if it was like some fat bitch from, uh, I don't know, uh, Idaho or something that was, in, that was in Manhattan, <laughs> and, uh, and she hit the side of my, you know, and she punched down my side view, and it was just a lucky shot. Right. Am I jumping out of the vehicle at that point? Of course I am. Hey. But Anthony and I couldn't get out of that situation fast enough. We locked the doors. We didn't make eye contact. We're like, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. Please turn, you know, please get out of my way so we can continue. I don't like being hit. <laughs> it hurts. That's another thing about it makes getting... makes you feel funny. That, that's another thing about getting older. Yeah, I, getting hit in the face really does No, suck. no. When, when you're... You, you know something? Getting hit in the face is for your 20s. That's for guys in their 20s. The second you hit 30... It's no more getting hit in the face. It's and and once you really get into the mid late thirties, there should be no situation ever where you are being hit in the face, because it, it like I said it it does hurt, and it makes you feel really funny right after it happens. You're all woozy. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps you fall down. Yeah, hurting yourself even further. Last yeah. time I got punched in the face, I was nineteen. Nineteen? Yeah. Yeah. The last time I was punched in the face, 15 years old. 15 years old. I'd been in fights after that, but <laughs> never got hit in the face again. Yeah, yeah, and and this was, it was in California, I believe it was Compton. And uh, <laughs> I was hanging, no, it was, it was California though, San Juan Capistrano. And uh, this, this kid from school comes up to me, and he, he starts like open-handed slap boxing a little in front of uh, the, the strip mall. And I, I just, I'm... I'm not a fighter. I don't know technique or anything. If I get into a fight, it, or when I used to get into the fights when I was a kid and never really got into that many, it was always just about the dirtiest way to fight to end it as quickly as possible. I'm not a finesse guy that can outbox people, but I'll kick in the balls, I'll gouge out your eyes, just some, some way to end it. So uh, a slap boxing, you can't, you can't use that, that strategy. 
Because you don't know if it's serious or not. What? You're pissed off, and all of a sudden you guys go, all right, it's going to be a slap boxing fight? No, he fight. was just like, I, I didn't like him. He didn't like me, but we never fought. And he just steps up. He's like, hey, Kumia, what's up, man? And, like, takes a couple of these half-hearted swipes <laughs> open-handed at me. So I kind of put a block up and kind of, you know, I'm looking at what he's doing. Were you doing the rope-a-dope? Rope-a-dope. Yo, yo. So I, he kind of send my head back with this little right-hand slap. And when my head came back forward, this right, left hand full fisted punch was waiting for me right in the eye. Down goes Kumia! Down goes oh, Kumia! Yeah. Someone stop the fight! Down goes Kumia! <laughs> I was on my ass before I knew what happened, and I couldn't see out of that eye. I can't see, goddammit! <laughs> and blood just gushing from my brow. Like, completely split my uh, lid open. And then him and his friends were like, ah, laughing at me. <laughs> they could have just pulled my pants down and, and raped me. It was just it, it, totally emasculated. Call me a Bombayé. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that was just, that was the last time I was hit in the face. Hit in the head, man. Just, oh, it's just awful stinks. getting hit in the face. I got caught with a w woman. Oh, oh. Oh, I think you told the story oh. once. I'm telling you. I'm not. Uh, uh, maybe way in the beginning. I mean, we have a whole new audience now. What? Uh, what? What happened? I was. Uh, I was 19. Oh, I was. Wow. I this was, is a great story. Figures too. Of course, you were caught with a woman. You horny little bastard. Well, I was. I was seeing this woman casually. Um, we never actually uh, had sex. I think maybe once for a couple seconds, but uh, maybe not even. <laughs> and she All was right, separate. She was separated from a guy. They were married, and all she would tell me about this guy was what I'm like. He lived with a girlfriend, though, and uh, all she would say is what a maniac he was, and how he used to like to fight cops. But like he oh, was, good. he was like a true psycho. He was what Ope was just talking about. He was the type of guy that the bigger you are, the more likely he was to try to punch you in the face. Like if he mm -hmm. was, if five cops jumped on him, he was really ready to fight. Uh, right. He was like an animal. Yeah, there are guys like that out there, I that understand. Just, that don't want a way out. They want to... Yeah, but in general, a most people... Taser and a billy club. Yeah. But that, most people just will size up... Someone, most people, Someone yeah. weaker, but there are those guys out there that'll take on anybody. I understand that. She lived over, uh, 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 like, a pub. So one night we were laying there on the couch just kissing, and um, weren't doing anything sexual, really. <laughs> and, and I hear um, the sound of, like... Let me see. Which I think, I hear this knock on the wood, and I'm like, is somebody downstairs taking a broom handle and knocking the ceiling? Mm. I'm like, what is that Maybe about? Maybe Opie's down there. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Maybe there's a man laying rocks who doesn't approve of <laughs> the loud smacking of our lips. The loud smooching. And then I'm kiss I'm laying down, all that's on is the light of the TV, and I hear her go, oh my God. <laughs> oh my God, Oh, no that's way. not good. <laughs> oh, and you're thinking... Hmm, let me turn around. I hope the prize patrol's there with a big million dollar check. All, I'm not thinking anything. I felt two hands on my back. Oh, no. And I saw white. I never saw it. I just saw white. I got punched in the face oh, so God. fast and so hard twice. I saw stars. Twice? Dude. Dun, dun. It was. I didn't. I just oh. felt hands, stars. And the next thing I know, he's flipping the lights on. And I'm sitting on the floor. One of my contact lenses was out. My mouth is all swollen up, and he is standing up. He was about six foot, and he's breathing heavy, and he's telling his wife that he, he went out and did cocaine. And he's like, <laughs> oh, man. He's like, and I'm going to kill him. You know I'm going to kill him, don't you? And he's, and, and he's, ref, he's referring to me in, 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 as if I'm not there, like I'm a real old person. Right. You're dead already. Oh, dude, it was. You couldn't, uh, there was no way to run out of the Second the floor. They lived on the second floor. He was blocking the door. Oh, my God. Um, you are done. I just sat there. I'm like, uh. You got to go for the window. And I didn't make the, uh, I had met him before at another place and never made the association. With the, yeah. He was married. You know, whatever. He was living with another girl. He just freaked out one night. Yeah, bring that up to him. I almost, hey. did, I almost said, you know, technically. <laughs> good thing you didn't come in last night, elbow to the ribs. <laughs> But um, he was actually one of those guys that because I just kind of sat there, she mellowed him out. She she told me like the next day she's like the only reason he didn't like kill you or throw you through the window is because you you sat there and and you were you were kind of small compared. You to were him. submissive. He was just the opposite of Ope. Like I sat there and I, I had no he didn't so he's like he couldn't just attack me sitting there. And he walks wow. through the door, and he goes uh, he, he mellowed out and he's like, look, I know you know she was my wife. Just tell me you knew she was my wife and I'll let you go. If you, if you don't tell oh, me that, no, though, that sounds like a setup. If you don't tell me, I'm going to kill you. 
Oh, that's a setup. And uh, well, what yeah. do you do? I said, uh, well, you're going to have to kill me because I didn't know. And uh, did you know though? Um, no, I well, I had I I knew like when I met him I didn't, but then I had seen his face like later, and I made the like oh okay, but when I met him I hadn't. Um, but I did like, you know what I mean? It's, 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 I could should have said yes technically, but uh, and then he opened Carlo, the door. Don't insult my intelligence. <laughs> Just tell me you were the one that fingered Sonny. <laughs> <laughs> That's the same gag he's playing on you. Yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, it was. It was Bozzini. It was Bozzini. And uh, good. <laughs> Get out of my sight. So I, I wound up walking out, and I, I, I got in a, a car, and uh, <laughs> big fat guy behind Clement you. Clement just said hello, <laughs> hello Jim. <laughs> <laughs> Through the windshield, we drove off, and I made the little <clears throat> my feet made the squeaky sound on the window as I was being strangled. No, I just drove home. And everybody at work the next day is like, "Would you get punched in the face?" And I'm like, and "My dad even no, asked me." No, I like, what fell you? on the treadmill. Yeah, I fell on a, a. It happened to have a class ring on it. I think we have <laughs> audio of you after you got punched in the face. Oh. Wow, that is really annoying. <laughs> You're not being fair. <laughs> oh, exactly. <laughs> oh, exactly. <laughs> wow. Yeah. He punched you twice in the head. I never and then saw let it. You dude, go, dude. I never saw it coming. I never, I never saw his face until I was on the floor looking up in the lights. That was what was so scary. Is like because there was no lights on, just the TV, and I, I went from one reality to the other. Like I yeah. just, it was instant yeah I'm, I'm actually probably in hindsight glad i didn't see him coming because i was 19 i wasn't a tough guy but i would have at least you know when there's a larger man coming out you can't just sit there you have to at least stand try up to defend yourself and that would have been a, he probably yeah. would have picked up a tv and cracked it off my face because he was and well he should have a psycho yeah adulterer <laughs> uh, now he was you know i, I should have pointed out that look technically sir you are involved in another relationship and yeah. she's moved on but i felt it was how about i come over when you're having sex sir and punch you in the face <laughs> that's yeah. right some girl that isn't your wife i know uh, let's go to Barney. Hey, Barney. Hey, how's it going today? Uh, I don't know. We're kind of just goofing Good. off, it looks like. And All you, right, Barney. You can Barney. continue at any yeah. time, sir. Go ahead. Hey, I was just, uh, wow. just the other day, I, I don't get to listen to it very often in the morning, but uh, I have XM and I got to listen to the replays, and Jim was talking about the sensitivity training, and uh, I damn near wrecked my truck when he says the only kind of sensitivity training I want is I pull my pants down, have my sack hanging out, and someone tickles it, and I go, ooh, that's sensitive. Well, thank you, uh, Barney. Appreciate it. Always got to have this loaded. I don't know why I yeah, don't still there? this. I yeah, yeah, what? Um, yeah, unfortunately, we are. So. We, we, we missed the last part. What, are, what, are, what, are, what was the last part of it that you liked, that your phone cut out? Uh, yeah. when, when Jim said he would just pull his pants down and have his sack hanging out, and someone would tickle it, and he would go, ooh, that's sensitive. Wait, Barney? Barney? Yeah. Your cell phone uh, crapped out. What was that last part again? The last part. The last part is uh, when Jim says he pulls his pants down and he has his sack hanging out. Barney, you there? Yeah. It's Barney. 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 You hear me? No, no. I, got, I got him now. I got the, the part was about... We heard something about sensitivity. Sensitivity Norton. training. All right, can you hear me now? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, now you're fine. Now it seems pretty good. All right. Well, that's, I'm on my way to work, but hey, I just said when Jim said the sensitivity training, when he, uh, any kind of sensitivity training he wants is he'll pull his pants down, his sack will be hanging out, and someone will tickle him. Bar Barney. All right. We'll God see damn. Barney, hold it. I hear you now fine. You crackled right when you said sensitivity training. Okay. One more time. Sorry. That's okay. I just said uh, when Jim was saying about the sensitivity training. Oh yeah, we were talking about that the other day. Oh yeah, the, the whole thing was a goof. Which which what which line did you like? Because the whole thing turned out to be a goof. That was the one where you said the only kind of training that you wanted, you would pull your pants down, have your sack hanging out, and someone t would tickle it. The, the what? I would too tickle what? Your sack. The sack of what? His um. Your balls. Oh, the ball sack. Yes. Well, I, I didn't. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha!
<laughs> we heard you every time, stupid. <laughs> You see how, how bummed he got the more he had to repeat it? Like, he's even hearing, oh, this sucks. Uh, I uh, just was Jim's... Uh, was this story sucks. stinks. Yeah, well, what I said was, <laughs> oh. Speaking of the sensitivity training, Steve, uh, put this together. Life in corporate America can be a grind. All they do is they remove the humor from everything. Uh, and you don't want to worry about your behavior around the office becoming a problem. I'm standing here with this erection feeling silly. You're going to need some sound advice. Talk less and suck more. <laughs> from a qualified professional. I'm a stand-up comic who hates his own guts. New from the HIV Corporation. It's the Jim Norton Sensitivity Handbook. Sensitivity training. Maybe you can send someone from Human Resources in and they can tickle my bag a little. I can go, ooh, very sensitive area. And then they can leave. Jim will help you construct a business plan. Greed is good. <laughs> He'll guide you through the hiring process. Hire all fat chicks if you don't want them harassed. He's also a whiz at customer relations. Here's what you do, stupid. When they complain, you go, click. You take the phone. Click. Ladies will also enjoy Jim's wardrobe recommendations. You send them to training to not have those big tits showing during the work day. Jim is also an experienced marriage counselor. How could you marry a chick that won't drink out of your mule? And he can help mend even the most fractured of family relationships. I killed my wife with a hammer. And he'll also assist with time management. 1.30, Human Resources attempts to talk about sensitivity training. 1.35, they're wiping <laughs> saliva that Jim Norton has spit on them off of themselves as he walks out door. <laughs> <laughs> End of meeting. Call 1-800-LOG-DROP for the Jim Norton Sensitivity Handbook. Order today. Meeting adjourned.